a very big welcome to the third broadcast show live. Um, kicking off today with me, uh, writer, consultant and TV Bay columnist uh, Dick Hobbs. Uh, he will be giving us the news, including uh, news about the Olympics and, uh, of course, what's coming up on IBC. Um, I'm also expecting a UPS delivery uh, any minute and uh, this will have a new piece of kit uh, that we can have a little look at. So hopefully that will turn up in time. Um, also, if you use wireless audio gear, then uh, you will no doubt know the implications of the new channel regulations, uh, but maybe not quite sure what you need to do. Uh, I certainly don't. Um, audio specialist uh, Ian Coles from Visuals uh, will be here to answer your questions. Uh, so if you're on the chat room or if, you've got, if you're on Twitter, or feel free to email us, um, any questions to do with the use of Channel 38, uh, please do so. Uh, we will put those towards Ian. Uh, we'll also uh, be testing uh, a little live link up uh, via Skype with Mark Brown from Editors Keys later. And uh, we're going to be uh, having a short chat uh, about the sort of latest gadgets uh, that they can supply. And uh, Alex H. French from uh, Rotolite is here uh, just before he sets off to IBC uh, with the new Anova Light. I know I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, I know uh, uh, Tess Christman and uh, they've come across uh, from a company in... Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, I can't remember. Ah, Fabrics. I knew, I knew there was something else coming up. Uh, Fabrics will be coming across to talk about uh, their new kit and what they'll be showing at IBC as well. Um, and we also uh, have with us, um, uh, of course, the Pelly Case Challenge. Uh, it wouldn't be a broadcast show without one. Uh, and uh, last uh, time, if you remember, uh, we tested the Pelly Case behind a rib. Um, a little bit too fast and we definitely tested it to destruction. Uh, so this time we're going a little bit more serious and thank you for your suggestions. Uh, and uh, we've taken those on board and we will be testing the Pelly case to just see how watertight it is in our swimming pool test. And we've also got uh, some details of competition where you can actually win a black magic cinema camera and a pole cam starter series. So it's going to be an exciting ch show today and uh, make sure you keep tuned. So uh, before we get started, uh, last time we did the show, you may notice we had a few audio issues. And as always, we are learning. And uh, it was great that you gave us some feedback on that so we knew what to look for. We put a lot of things in place, which I hopefully will make this show even better than the last one, at least audio wise. Uh, so uh, let us know how uh, it sounds uh, this time round, please. Right. Uh, to talk about the news this week, we have writer consultant and of course tv bay columnist uh dick hobbs dick great for you to come along thank you very much nice to be here john uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on in the world of broadcast well we're going to be talking about ibc a lot but yep. before we get on to that there's another exhibition happening this week um ifa ifa yep. in berlin um and that's a consumer electronic show it's the big european consumer electronic show and the word that's reaching me from that is that the key message coming out of that are big screens, 84-inch screens, and 4K resolution. That seems to be what people are getting excited by. I, I noticed that myself while looking at the news that people are mentioning 84-inch you know, screens and 4K. I'm assuming with 4K, is, you might as well just have 84-inch screens enough anyway, because you wouldn't see it on smaller screens, would you? Uh, no, no. I mean, I can be very boring for a very short time. Um, the resolution of the, the eye, uh, what we can see is we can discriminate one arc second, so yep. a 60th of a degree we can discriminate. And if you do a bit of um, O-level GCSE trigonometry, um, a 42-inch screen with today's HD, 1920 yep. by 1080, um, that's pretty perfect match at a viewing distance of a bit less than two metres, right. which happens to be about how far away yeah. my sofa is from my telly. <laughs> um, bigger than that, you've got to be further away or you're wasting pixels. Yeah. So, you know, they show, they show 84-inch screens with 4K because... 
you've got to go that side before you start noticing exactly okay. exactly gotcha. and i suspect because they can yeah um the interesting thing though is that they're not talking about 3d 3d right. seems to have um died a death at least yeah. in the home and i again another thing i heard mentioned is that you know these screens when they do show them at these sort of resolutions that they almost look 3d-ish anyway because the resolution is so good. yeah yeah i mean you, you, you there are lots of yep. ways of appreciating depth, and yep. and yeah, the number of pixels makes a huge amount of yep. difference, um, as well as being 4K yep. pixels. They also tend to be um, 50p, so they're full resolution, 50 frames yep. a second, or 60 frames yep. a second. So yeah, you, you've got a lot of detail going on there. And obviously, uh, I understand recently there was a, a quite impressive sporting event that went on, I believe called the Olympics. In the yes, UK. yeah. I mean, for, for two and a half weeks, we never had to decide what we were going to watch yeah. on the telly when we went home. I thought um, um, Olympic Broadcasting Services, which is the host broadcasting company, did a pretty good job. I thought the BBC was amazing. It's, it, it set out some years ago the, the idea that it was going to broadcast every event, yep. every minute of every event, uh, which seemed impossible, but but there it was. Um, and it was a triumph for broadcasting, yep. 24 channels at, 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 at some times, um, 26, because it was still broadcasting on BBC One and BBC Three as yep. well, and huge numbers of streaming output. So, um, yeah, an amazing achievement. Yep. Um, now we're in the Paralympics, and again, some of the coverage is terrific. I'm slightly underwhelmed by yeah. Channel 4's coverage. Um, they're getting into their stride around the events, but I thought the way they presented the opening ceremony was um, was a bit miserable. Um, uh, having Jon Snow as a newsreader <laughs> there, finding something gloomy to say about every country yeah. that arrived, I thought was was, was a bit sad. Yeah, bunch of <laughs> bunch of athletes for the moment of their lives coming into yeah. the stadium, and, and he's describing exactly how bad their economy is. Yeah. Oh, I could have lived without that. They had a lot to follow, didn't they? It, with, well, yes, yeah. With, with the BBC coverage. Um, I th that neatly leads us into the IBC story, yeah. though, because one of the, the big conference sessions uh, is going to be uh, an Olympics debrief. Right. And Barbara Slater, um, who is the BBC's director of sport, um, is, is the star guest in that session. Uh, it's possible, uh, I understand, that Manolo Romero, who's chief executive of... Olympic Broadcasting yeah. uh, Services will also be there. So they'll have absolutely the A-team. It'll be fascinating. They've got somebody on the panel from NBC, the American network that covered it. Um, the uh, reports from the States were pretty damning event, uh, of NBC. They, they time-shifted a lot of events so that they were uh, broadcast in, uh, in the time slots where they could charge more for advertising. Right. So... That, that upset a lot of people. Yeah. They were spectacularly ill-prepared about the opening ceremony when, when Kenny Branagh appeared <laughs> dressed as Isambard Kingdom Brunel to, to do um, uh, the speech from yep. The Tempest. Uh, they just said, why is Abraham Lincoln there? Which <laughs> was a bit of a, um, a, bit of a, a blowout. Yep. And I guess we ought to remember, you know, we're thinking now in terms of Brazil it, four years from now, yep. Um, there will be a guy from one of the Brazilian broadcasters uh, in that session. Uh, and, of course, they have the World Cup in two years' yeah. time. But the Olympics, the next Olympics, of course, is is in two years' time also, in Sochi, in Russia. And I've not heard much about that yet. It'd be interesting to see if yeah, that gets talked absolutely. about. So, um, you mentioned, obviously, the Olympics and sports coverage at IBC. Now, something I, which I was a little bit surprised at is they have Will I Am as a keynote speaker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm quite surprised about yeah. this too. I mean, he has a pedigree. He is um, uh, a director of of Intel, and he has a huge amount of interest in, uh, first of all, in, in education mm -hmm. in terms of technology, but also in developing technologies to suit the the creative um, artist. So um, I think there's yeah, he probably got some interesting things to say. Yep. Whether the IBC conference audience will turn out for him, I don't know. We'll find out at the weekend. We shall indeed. We'll find out at the weekend. Um, now, obviously, IBC has a lot of it to do with the show floor. What are we expecting to see on the show floor this year? Um, well, there are going to be some more stories around company mergers and acquisitions, I fear. Um, we've had a few recently. Um, Miranda, for instance, now part of Belden. Yep. Harris, one of the biggest companies, we know they're up for sale, and my understanding is that we may have at least some information coming out next weekend. Right. 
Grass Valley, which a couple of years ago went through its sale, um, has been reorganised again, and that's going to be uh, interesting to see how, how they develop. They've lost um, their great figurehead, Jeff Rosico, who was um, head of the, well, effectively head of the company, and, and he's now leaving them. Um, and even small companies, um, uh, Sintel, yeah. uh, the film people, used to be a huge powerhouse, now has to be regarded as a small company. Yeah. Um, that's now been acquired by Black Magic. And who knows what else will yep. have happened by the next weekend. In terms of products, mm. I think um, people will be talking about 4K cameras. Yep. Again, you know, we've got 4K displays. We're going to have 4K cameras. Mm. Um, again, this is something that manufacturers can do, so they'll try selling them to us. We'll see what applications we have. Um, Low-cost cameras are, are transforming the way we do things because low-cost cameras are now really good um you mentioned earlier the black magic yeah. camera which um is a fantastic achievement and we're all very much looking forward to seeing the yeah. uh, the production versions of that um the gopro hero yeah. you see on every action operation nowadays it's fantastic mm. um hitachi um hitachi has always been in system cameras um and they are really moving up i think right. i think we'll see them joining the big two uh, we'll see a lot in convergence technology. I mean, we're talking on the internet now, but I think that sort of um, mix of technologies will make all production yep. um, easier. So the Olympic torch relay was an unexpected mm. television hit. That was all done by um, 3G telephony. Yep. Um, we're seeing things like wireless mesh networks being used to support journalist operations, for instance. Companies like Cobham are doing interesting things yep. there. Um, so, uh, service-oriented architectures, that's a buzzword that's been around for a while. We now have a standard to work to, FIMS, and that's, yep. that's going to be um, uh, happening. And I think we're inevitably going to be talking about social media. Um, lots of stories there, and I think you know, the idea that social media will be supporting broadcast as well as driving people into different yep. ways of delivering it. Um, release came out today, I think, from... Um, the two most unpronounceable <coughs> companies in the industry, mm -hmm. VizRT, V-I-Z-R-T, or yep. however you pronounce it, and Never.No. Um, they've collaborated on, on delivering social media things. And inevitably, there are 1,300, 1,400 yep. exhibitors. There's going to be stuff we have no idea about yet. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going. You'll be going. I should um, be there. Yep. Uh, any, for those that are, any sort of little tips that you might have for, for IBC? Quinters. One thing that, that even regulars tend to forget about are the free screenings in the auditorium. Right. Um, and I always strongly recommend these, uh, mainly because they're free. Yep. Um, on Saturday night, uh, they're showing the movie Prometheus, okay. uh, um, which I haven't had a chance to see yet. I'm not sure if I will on Saturday night, but yeah, it's there, it's free. Um, Sunday night, the awards ceremony, that's good, clean fun. Yep. Um, bad an hour, some... Uh, some bonus footage in that, lots of Olympic yep. talk and things like that. Um, then on Monday night, there's an interesting one, the the movie Hugo, Martin Scorsese's Hugo, which, oh, right. which won yep. huge numbers of awards. Yep. That's being shown in 3D with um, not conventional projectors, but the new Christie laser projector. And the significance of that is that it blows the picture up to the same level of brightness as you would expect with a 2D film. Right. So we're going to get the 3D effect, but without that sort of dimness that yep. you... you you tend yeah. to have to do. Yeah. Um, if you've never been in the auditorium in the Rye Centre, it's worth it because the seats are the most comfortable theatre seats I've ever been <laughs> in. Uh, the tech team at IBC builds a wonderful state-of-the-art cinema. As I yeah. say, Monday night, you're going to see something that very few other people have. They think it's the first time a full-length right. movie has been shown with a laser projector. So mm -hmm. that's that's going to be a world first. Yeah. And um, just to finish off the news, you always finish the news with the travel <laughs> and weather. Um, if you're only going to IBC for the weekend this year, um, there is a replacement bus service between the airport and the exhibition centre. Right. Um, typically, the uh, the uh, Norwegian, uh, Norwegian Netherlands Railway service yeah. uh, are digging up the line in the tunnel out of the airport. There is a shuttle bus service right. which is run by IBC and it's free, direct from the airport to um, to the centre. And a quick look at the weather. Because it's worth looking at. It's not yeah. going to rain this year. Well, hey. uh, it looks like now it's going to be dry, less than a 10% chance of rain, and comfortably warm temperatures. So um, 
those critical meetings we need to have in the beach um, <laughs> that'll be where we are we'll see you there hopefully that won't come back to bite you Dick thank you very much <laughs> thank you John we'll see you in Excellent. Amsterdam in a couple you of days certainly will thank you um, just to remind you that uh, Dick does a regular column on TV Bay and you can find that uh, always on the back page so he's the easiest one to find uh, certainly make sure you go and have a read of that it's certainly uh, I read it every month um, so I just want to thank uh, Stream UK uh, for streaming this uh, live show and of course looking after the video on demand version uh, for which the last show has now been uh, viewed uh, basically over 3,000 times. Uh, I, think it's, I think we've just about hit 2,000 on YouTube plus the other places that we put the, uh, the video clip as well. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, you may also recall that last show we had Selwyn in talking uh, about satellite solutions and we actually streamed the show. Um, via the satellite last time. Well, we're doing the same again. Uh, we liked it so much. Uh, well, we didn't buy the company, but we'd certainly have one mounted on the roof. And again, we're now streaming via satellite uh, to you today. And I can highly recommend uh, their service and delivery. And there you go, look at that. Contact information uh, just there. And um, it is worth having a look at. Uh, it seems to be a very cost effective solution. Um, so I have Alex French with me. Hi, Alex. Hello. Hi. Um, now, you are here from Rotolite. Yes, we are. Thank you very much for inviting You're us. You're most welcome. And uh, one of the products that you uh, supply is this one, which is the Anova Light. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the Anova. Of course, love to. So this is the Rotolite Anova. Yeah. It's a 1,000 watt equivalent floodlight. Right. Only uses 38 watts of power. Yeah. And it's got a lovely wide angle beam to it. I won't turn the light on, but I'll just show <laughs> you the front of it. There we go. So as you can see, it's uh, six different sections. Yeah. Two different types of LEDs. It's by color goes from 3200 up right. to 6300 Kelvin. Very, very accurate. Yeah. As you can see, they're barn doors. And very, very light, only three and a half kilos, so very, very portable as well. Okay. As you can see there, battery powered, so yep. you can put a V-Lock battery on there, yep. or if you use an adapter, an Anton Bauer. So right. uh, about three and a half hour uh, usage on that. Wow. About six hours with an Anton Bauer. Wow. So very, very good. Yeah. And uh, very, very simple to control. So I just uh, switch it onto battery mode there. Yep. Very, very simple uh, controlling here as well. Very, very useful. Now, if I just wait for that to turn on, there we go. So just make sure that's on the right control. Yep. So let's put it onto local there. And go onto the brightness. So you can go in sing, sing, uh, single steps. Right. Or if you hold it down, you can go into oh, okay. four steps there. So you can get a really fine adjustment. Exactly. On the, on the exactly. Yeah. Okay. And as I mentioned, it's by color as yeah. well. So that goes from uh, 3150 Kelvin. Yeah. All the way up to 6300 Kelvin. And same, same control there as well. So in tens or in 50s there and then go all the way down and all the way up there okay. as well. Now you, you mentioned about it, obviously you just shown it, the, the fact you can change the colour temperature. You can, yeah. Now I've heard that this has quite a unique way of doing it and quite an accurate way. How, how does it know it's sending out the correct Okay, so each light is hand calibrated in the right. studio. We use uh, a Konica Minolta CL100, uh, CL200A yeah. rather. And what that does, rather than the traditional light meters, it brings both uh, LED colors together and matches that midpoint. Right. So that creates a very accurate reading. Now, we've actually uh, measured this, and it's within one to two Kelvin of accuracy. Right. So that's unrivaled. Yeah. Usually the broadcast standard is within sort of 50 Kelvin. Yeah. This is in one to two up to 10. So very, very, very accurate as well. And the other thing I noticed is that when you change, I've seen a lot of LED lights, they, especially when you change it, they flicker a little bit. Yeah. This one seems to be... Not at all. This is uh, a true continuous light, so right. flicker-free. Now, traditional lights use pulse uh, width modulation. Yeah. So what that means is, to the naked eye, yep. it doesn't look like it's flashing. Yeah. But to a, a to a camera yep. or a, you know a photography camera as yep. well on a, on a short um, exposure, yep. you'll be able to see sort of black lines and sort of uh, a yep. bit of uh, fuzziness, I suppose, on the on the on the image. But with this, it's a true continuous lighting source. Right. So you don't get any black lines at all. Yeah. Right? Um, now, obviously, it's battery powered. It's mains powered. Yeah. Uh, I know it's got standard DMX as well. Yeah. Control on there. Uh, it looks like you could sort of just about use this anywhere. Is it designed oh, for any particular use, or is it? 
Um, it's great for photography, but it, you know, fantastic for video, uh, right. cinema, things like that as well. As I mentioned, it's got that really wide angle beam, so you get that really yeah. soft lighting effect, lovely little catch light in yeah. the eyes, no harsh shadows. So as I mentioned, it can be used anywhere. Obviously, yeah. V-Lock battery. Yes. Very, very light and portable, only three and a half kilos as yeah. well. And on top of that, as I mentioned, you can control it locally. Yeah. DMX, so you just control yeah. it in there, put it into a normal traditional lighting board. Sure. And Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi? Yes. So this is, you, okay, explain Wi-Fi Yeah, so we, we have dubbed this for a reason that the world's most advanced LED floodlight. Right. Because of this. This is one of the world's first uh, Wi-Fi enabled studio yeah. lights, floodlights. So we've created an app called the Magic Eye. Right. And this is uh, available. So I'll just make sure that that's on. Yeah. So what I will do then is I then, you can see a Nova there. Okay. Okay, so that's got a pin number. Uh, at the yeah. moment, it's 018AA. Uh, -A. Okay, so get me getting technical, this is a Wi-Fi it is. access point built into it. Exactly, so, so no need for a router. Don't need to router or anything. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So you can, side of me. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. So uh, that's now connected. Okay. Come out of that. Go to the, the Magic Eye. As I say, this is for iPhone and iPad. Okay. This came out about a month ago. Right. So it's four ninety nine to download. Yep. Okay, and it will be in staged releases. Right. So this is the single view mode. Yep. So what this will allow you to do is go to single mode. I will go to the uh, control here. So just go there. We go. So again, single slowly, or if I double tap it, if you look on the light there. Yeah. I'm controlling it wirelessly, yep. and again with the color temperature. Do it double tap it and do it quickly or slowly. So if you had this mounted up on the ceiling somewhere. Exactly. No okay. no wires whatsoever. So if I go up there and you can do a design fade as well. So if I just come out of here, yeah. go onto there and go onto the design fade option. Click on that. And what that allows you to do basically with, with T V studios, you have the uh, the lighting guy and he's got all the uh yes. the um the options there and yeah. he needs to bring it down at the end of the show. So yeah. you've got like five second fade. Yeah. So what you can do if you have it on, say, uh, 100%, and you can bring it down to 0%, just make sure that's there, and you can do it from no time at all to 20 seconds. So if we just do it, say, three seconds, click apply, and then it fades down. Wow. So it's Amazing. all automated as well. So I'm, I'm going to ask you another techie question here. If you've got two of these... Yeah. You can control as many as you like. So... so okay. The first release yep. was a single view mode and designer fade. Yep. Um, the next one, which is coming out in the next two weeks, I believe, okay. that's the Pro um, yep. Pro app, and that'll be a free download. Okay. Right. Just once you've bought the uh, the original app. Okay. And that will allow you to control as many uh, lights as possible. Yep. As long as they're all on the same pin, they all join together. Okay. Yep. And you'll be able to control them. So you have a lighting board there, and you'll be able to control them at the same time or uh, single lights as well. Now, the next great thing about this app yeah. as well is it's DMX master mode. So if you right. have one and over light yes. and you have other um, DMX controllable lights as well, daisy chain them all together yeah. and you'll then be able to control all of those lights on a DMX style uh, wow. lighting board as well. And then to top that off, we've got the colorimeter. Yep. Now, what that will allow you to do is it will use the iPhone uh, camera or the iPad camera, yep. and it will um, sample the ambient light. So say you're a DOP over in the Caribbean, yeah. okay, and uh, you've got some green screen back in the studio, and you've got Johnny Depp standing there. So what you do is you place a, ca a calibration card in front of him and the camera, and it will take the uh, color temperature and the brightness of where Johnny Depp is standing. <laughs> Yep. save that then they can then send it over the network to the green screen studio yep. and replicate that brightness and color, color temperature onto the Innovas. Wow. Yeah. So um, that's very exciting. That'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Next month, I believe. So yep. you mentioned these upgrades. So am I right? So you pay four ninety nine for the first, yep. for the app. Yep. And then it's... You, like your typical iPhone app, you just yeah, just you, you're just going to throw out updates. Yeah, exactly. So it'll come up with a little dot on your so uh, app store, and you download it, and you've got the, the no, main in, stuff. no in app purchases or anything. You can no. supply. Yeah, exactly. So, so once you basically tie in, you're just going to be adding functionality all the time. To exactly. This, yeah. The other. Yeah. That is, uh, it's it's quite an amazing piece of kit. Now, where can people get hold of this? Uh, you can go straight to www.rotolight.com. Yeah. Uh, you can hire as alias hire VMI Hammerhead TV. There's loads of different companies that you'll be able to hire it yep. from. So you can sample it first yeah, and then go out and buy hire it. Hire it, well. find out whether exactly. you like it or not. Yeah. Then. So you can just download it. Uh, sorry, download it. You can buy it off the internet on rotolight.com. Yep. Brilliant, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Very impressive. Um, I think we need to have a look at our studio lighting <laughs> at some point. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm quite impressed with that because it's very techy and I like techy things. Um, 
it's uh, definitely worth you going to have a look. And, uh, oh, hold on. I have just heard something. Uh, UPS has literally just arrived with a new toy. Oh, and here it is. Just like that, amazing. Um, we're gonna have a, a, a quick look at this and see what we've got. Um, now, I admit, I, I know what's coming. So, uh, here it is. They've, they've kindly undone that bit for me, but everything else is new. So what we have here is the new uh, Matrix Micro Quad. Uh, what is the Matrix Micro Quad, I hear you say? I'm gonna catch this, I'm gonna throw it over there. Uh, what the Matrix Micro Quad is, and we're gonna be uh, testing this over the uh, next a uh, couple of weeks. I'm certainly going to be using it for something that I, comes in very handy for the jobs that I do. Um, this will take uh, up to four HDSDI inputs. Here it is. It comes in a nice little box with a PSU which is in there as well. Uh, let me take it out for you. If you've seen the Matrox MC100, it's the same sort of format as that. Uh, what this allows you to do is take four HDS HD SDI inputs, uh, basically any format, um, and output them as a, a two by two uh, typical sort of quad view onto any HDMI monitor. Um, and the beauty, the beauty of it is, it's a single box. You plug it in, and immediately you get yourself your quad view. It just, it just works. Um, it has some other nice little options as well. Obviously, it has a few little buttons at the front, just here. Uh, you can select one of those uh, uh, views and you can have that suddenly go full screen. Uh, you can activate a VU meter for that input as well. Um, and also it's got a little USB, uh, mini USB just here, uh, which you can um, plug into a computer and then you can control it via your PC as well. Uh, in which case I think if I remember rightly you can name uh, the inputs and do all sorts of nice little flashy things and so remotely be able to switch between four and one and two and such like and go full screen choose to have your BU meters up uh, or not or with any standard HDMI screen uh, it's got some disk switches just here so everything is you can you know you can use it standalone you don't need to put it into a machine you can choose to hide the BU meters you can choose to hide the labels uh, you can put video inputs change the video input type as well on here uh, you can lock audio to channel one, so if you always just wanted to hear the same audio instead of it switching, you could always do that, it's very handy. Uh, so if you've got your program main sound coming on one, you can do that. So, uh, that is the Matrox Micro Quad, um, 3G HD SD HDMI Multiviewer, and I'm gonna have a play with it over the next few weeks. Uh, certain things that we do where this is gonna be coming very handy, and I'll write a little review of it as well in TV Bear Magazine, so just put that down there. Uh, if you want to find out a little bit more about this, um, then uh, if I remember rightly, Matrox are in Hall 7, uh, stand B29. Uh, so go and have a look. Uh, I used the MC100. Uh, I used it on a job recently where the whole program feed went through that. In fact, the whole program feed's going through one here as well, and we're using it as a backup device because it has watched the switchover. So have a, you can have a look at that and the MC100. Uh, at uh, Matrox Stand, Horse 7 B29. Uh, you'll find it somewhere amongst the thousands of stands there. Uh, right, we shall move on. Um, now, one little area I'm not too afraid about is test and measurement. And with me today, I have Paul Nichols. Hello, Paul. Nice to meet you. From Fabrics. He's going to explain a little bit about the beauty of test and measurement, what you can supply, and what all this fantastic amount of kit is that we've got to look at here. So, first of all, now I, I hear rumours in the broadcast industry that yet again, Fabrics, UK company, has moved. Oh, we have indeed. This again. Is, uh, again, <laughs> uh, this is uh, the fourth time in as many years. Yeah. So uh, on the move, we uh, started um, actually, well, the company started in 2005, but yep. we 2008 uh, we kind of all grouped together in a, what was a very small building, yep. and then every subsequent year we've expanded into what is now a 1,000 square, uh, 1,000 square meter wow. building um, yeah. just outside Newbury and Thatcham, and uh, purpose built, uh, purpose designed. Um, it's a great building and yep. designed to take about about 80 staff. So we, we're really going for it, and really on growth. 
So for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about Fabrics. I know that you, you know, you're well known for your handheld devices now. So tell us a little bit about. Uh, well, I suppose most people have, have heard of Fabrics because of, of these uh, items yep. here. Um, there are three in the range. Uh, what's unique about them is they're very portable. Yep. It's a handheld device, as you can see, battery powered uh, and mains powered should yep. you need it. The unique thing about them is they are a generator, analyzer, and a monitor. Right. Uh, that's significant because to have all the tool sets in one portable yes. device, brilliant. Um, from a power point of view, uh, about two hours of, uh, of uh, untethered um, power. Yep. From the point of view of what it supports, it supports SD, SD, SDI, HD SDI, yep. and, and the new format, 3G SDI. Right. And of course it was 3G SDI which really made the name of this product because at the time there was nothing out there that could actually uh, compete uh, with generating, in this right. case, and analyzing 3G. That's where it made its name. Uh, this particular product here is the Fabrics SXE, yep. and uh, the unique thing about the product is obviously it generates and analyzes, hence yep. I've got the generator part of it, and I can pull it back into itself, and there you have an analyzer. Uh, but what stands out on this product uh, is the ability to look at uh, an eye pattern, right. and uh, this is British innovation at its best. Um, there is literally uh, no other product around that has the ability to look at an eye pattern with automated measurements. And um, for a broadcast engineer, you've got every tool set in here yep. to uh, to go around the broadcast infrastructure and and, and test and analyze. Um, so other things that's uh, obviously 16 channels of embedded audio, CRC, EDH um, testing, waveforms, vectors, all the kind of tools that you normally uh, can see in a kind of a, a, a big cabinet. Yep. And here it is uh, in a portable device that uh, literally you can handle with, with one hand and it travels with you everywhere. And what you hear engineers say is, um, you know, pass me the fabrics. Right. You know, it's become, you know, um, embedded, I suppose, into the broadcast uh, yep. uh, broadcast uh, arena. Brilliant. Now, um, now, that's the handheld, obviously, you started with that. Yeah. That's what people yeah. know. Um, yeah. That's not handheld, what I see there. No, this what is uh, <laughs> it's a bit of overkill, isn't it, <laughs> to, to bring down on the uh, on the UVIBC. But uh, what you're looking at here is something uh, 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 brand new, effectively. Uh, this is a, a, a rack mount range. It's called the RX series. This yep. is the SX series. And what's key to this particular product range is it's a, it's a modular product. Yeah. It has all the tool sets, all the ease of use, all the, the, the GUI uh, that's been implemented so well on the handheld has gone into the into these particular products. Yep. Um, three to choose from, uh, the RX2000 with these integral screens, the RX1000 and the RX500, but all of them share a rasterized output. And this is significant at the Tonk Pier. Um, you can have up to eight simultaneous SDI channels. Now that's a world first for yep. this kind of product. It's incredibly small in the in size. It's a 13 centimeter depth here, um, yep. running on about 16 watts of power, which again, for those of you who are in OB land, uh, OB trucks, you need to look at the weight, you need to look at the yep. power. These are ideal for putting in tailgates and then streaming out effectively the HDMI output, which you're looking at here into the main control room. Yep. Um, I've brought in four channels here for you to, to look at, but um, I won't go through it. I'm sure, sure for those of you at IBC, you can come and have a <laughs> play with it. But you can literally bring up as many instruments of any variety that you like across that massive 1920 by 1080 real estate. Yep. Um, and that's about 38% bigger than any other uh, right. device that's out there that is set um, with the, obviously this kind of tool set. Now, I think it's going to make a big well, it's going to have a big influence yeah. on, on broadcast. I think for the first time having so many simultaneous channels, each with this multi-viewer of instruments, uh, you're going to see some big changes in the way people use test and measurement yeah. uh, when, they, when they look to purchase um, uh, for new systems. Also takes an SDI out, um, so that's significant. You can have it both as HDMI or SDI. And, uh, and here you can see I have this little uh, optical cable here because yeah. this supports uh, optical um, uh, um, channels as well. Right. So, again, a fundamental shift in the way people yeah. look at test and measurement. And I mean, from layman's point of view, I'm looking at it, and you can't see it on the uh, on the screen, but the resolution is fantastic on that. You can, yeah. you know, you've got the small amount of in 
you know area here but you can you can everything's nice and crisp and clear and easy to see yeah absolutely and again and each of those instruments you can scale up if yeah. you needed to you know yeah. uh, so it's a new way of looking at all those instruments all at once interestingly you could use the sdi actually to record what you're seeing there so if you okay. had a fault you yeah. go back, back and, and see later. what's new yeah and as you say it's uh, not the largest piece of equipment you <laughs> expect to the rack and you think oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. Machine track, but it's two feet deep yeah yeah, yeah. It's no it's tiny it's, isn't it yeah anything, that is very very yeah. tiny yeah yeah brilliant now if people um going to IBC, obviously it's the IBC show, so yeah. we call it, we, you know, hopefully people are watching this before they go to yeah. IBC, they want to find your stand, is this the sort of thing they're going to be able to see at the show? Well certainly you're going to see uh, two impressive racks of this equipment with yep. obviously screens all over it to show off this uh, HDMI output, but again significantly you'll see new things from uh, Fabrics, you'll see Dolby support, the Dolby E right. generation and analysing on the, on the handheld, so full support of uh, Dolby E from that point of view. Um, obviously you'll see the RX, but you'll see something new, which is um, kind of a little sweetener for what we're, we're looking to uh, bring out uh, right. as we go into the new year, which is to do with ASI. So all of those uh, of you out there who are interested yeah. in MPEG and test and measurement for that, uh, that particular kind of streaming, then uh, please come and have a look. You'll, I think you'll be amazed with what you see. I'm going to test you now. Do you know what stand you're on? I am a uh, Hall 8 E29. That's I'm not bad, I'm is impressed. It? I'm very, very impressed. <laughs> so, I mean... Fabrics are always moving forward, not only in premises. Yes, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> exactly. In product as well. Absolutely, so, you know, yeah. That's what's the sort of thing we can look forward to in the next sort of 12 months. Any hints? That we can I think probably I'll probably hold back on, because uh, it kind of spoils it a little bit. Here we are on the eve of oh, IBC, and there's lots see, to see. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I have to get the thumb screws out, I think, for that one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, keep an eye on uh, on what Fabrics is doing. As yep. I say, we, we've moved into a big uh, uh, a big new building, so we yep. have a lot more R&D folk in. And, um, and we're doing some, some interesting stuff. This one, uh, I brought this along because I thought this is actually <laughs> quite good fun. This is uh, uh, an Olympic special, I have to say. Um, uh, 32 of these were in use uh, during the Olympic Games, and we're very Excellent. proud to have uh, supported it with, uh, with the Fabrics SXE. And easy to find when they look like that as well, isn't <laughs> well, it? Well, easy to lose as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Paul, thank you very much. Okay, I'm no going to test you one more time. Oh. What's, the, what's the stand? Hall 8 E29. want to see you there. That'll Hall 8 E29. <laughs> Paul, thank you very much. That's it's a great. pleasure. Uh, we'll come and see you there. <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, yeah, going to see Paul. Hall 8 E29. Look, I remembered it. Uh, uh, the, uh, the screens look amazing, I have to say. Uh, definitely go and have a look. Um, you're going to excuse us now. We're going to pay a few bills. And uh, here's a little message from AJA. So thank you, AJA, for their support. Uh, right, we're going to test something now. First time for broadcast show. I've done it before, but hopefully we will work on this one. Uh, we're going to do a, a little Skype call here uh, with Mark from uh, Editor's Keys. And uh, we're just going to basically be using it to test to see whether we can actually do the Skype link up. And also, uh, Mark's going to be coming along to the next show, and we're going to have a just a little chat about what's coming up with them next time around a broadcast show. So Mark, are you there? Can you hear me? Hi John, I can hear you, can you hear me? I can hear you, it's amazing. Hey. hey it works, ah, hello. How um, are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Um, it's it stayed up, may it last, let's see, we will oh, find hey. out. Uh, so Mark, well great for you to uh, take your evening out and, and come on the show. Um, now you're gonna come on uh, properly next month. Um, mm. And in case people don't know, tell us a little bit about uh, Editor's Keys and the sort of things that you guys supply. So Editor's Keys, we're mainly the company behind those colour-coded shortcut keyboards you see around uh, many of the UK's uh, and the world's uh, broadcast studios. Also used by freelance video and audio editors around the world as well. So that's our main product. We do those for genuine Apple keyboards. We produce those and we do our own branded black and white ones as well, which are quite new. Um, and we've also more recently under our studio series brand also been doing a range of um, home recording equipment such as our USB microphones 
and our portable vocal boobs as well, which I believe you've you've got one there, which uh, we I do. believe you use. We do. We yeah. do have one. I think we have a few editor's keys pieces of kit lying around here, which we use uh, every now and again. Oh, um, good. How are you getting on with them? Yeah, we, we love every everything editor's keys. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> um, now, I, I do know that we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the future of the sort of the keyboards uh, that Editor's Keys mm. are going to be bringing out. Do you want to give us a little taster of what we can expect to hear from you on that side? Yeah, well, we went back to the drawing board. I mean, the, the colour-coded shortcut keyboards have been around for, for years. And so we went back to the drawing board. We went to our Twitter followers, Facebook fans, and just talked about you know, where can we take the next shortcut editing keyboard. So. We've got a couple of new prototypes in the pipeline that we're hoping to release soon, and hopefully we can bring on to the, the next show there. Um, but the first one, we're going to be doing a, a first backlit editing keyboard. So if you imagine a normal keyboard uh, with no lights on it, during the day it would look like a regular keyboard. As soon as you activate it, the color-coded shortcuts come through the keys rather than being injection molded onto the, the top yeah. of the keyboard. So the keyboard looks black turn it on and the, the color codes come through. Um, the second keyboard we're working on as well is an LCD screen on each keyboard so that you can use it across multiple platforms. So let's say you're working within Premiere, it will show the shortcuts for Premiere. If you switch to something like Adobe Photoshop, those shortcuts will change and, and show you the relevant shortcuts for Photoshop. So hopefully we'll have a, a prototype for the next show with you guys, uh, hopefully if it's on time. Um, if not, we should have it very, very soon. Brilliant. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Um, we are definitely looking forward to you coming on, and I'm sure you'll bring something for us to look at either way on the show. Um, definitely. We're not sure what date it is, but we shall definitely keep you posted as to when it is so that you're <laughs> in. Uh, and obviously let other people know. And the Skype connection seems to work, which is great. Oh, brilliant. Um, Mark, thank you very much. We look forward to you coming along uh, next time on Broadcast Show. In the meantime, if people want to find out a little bit more about Editor's Keys, uh, where can they find you? So you can go to editorskeys.com for our full range of products. Uh, or if you want to chat to me directly about anything, I'm also on Twitter and it's at Editors Keys. Brilliant, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, I shall look forward to you meeting you in person next time on Broadcast Show. So thanks very much. That's Mark. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mark's going to come along and Skype worked. I'm not sure how it looks for you guys. You never know with Skype. You sometimes get interesting delay issues and things. So, But it, uh, we can take a Skype call in, which is good. It worked, broadcast show, and it worked. Um, just to remind you, coming up, we've got the uh, uh, we've got Ian coming on. We're talking about uh, the migration to Channel 38. If you are on the chat room or you're on Twitter or something, uh, just send us a question if you want, and we'll put that to him. I have a little earpiece in, and I have a man over there who may actually put that uh, information across to me, and I can ask Ian. Um, in the meantime, I did mention earlier that uh, we've got a competition, and um, we have a... Uh, well, we don't have, but uh, Polcam, uh, Stefan from Polcam has a uh, black magic cinema camera and uh, Polcam system to give away in a competition. A uh, bit more information, take a look at this. Thank you, John. Polcam is a super lightweight, highly portable professional crane system that can be rigged, operated and de-rigged without the need for any tools and by just one operator. The Polcam system is designed using a unique combination of both high-grade aluminium and declassified military-spec carbon fibre. This provides a rigid and rugged platform with full remote-controlled pan and tilt head, enabling the operator to fly any minicam, DSLR or video camera. In the simplest of terms, Polcam adds value to your production. With more than 15 years heritage and protected designs behind Polcam in the professional broadcast market, we decided after numerous requests to offer a new range of cost-effective entry-level cranes. The Polcam Starter Pack, or PSP as it's more commonly known now, is the solution. Finding an international audience, the Starter Pack has rapidly become commonplace in many professional and semi-professional arenas and applications including music, festivals, promos, weddings, churches, shorts, bumpers, stings and medical, to name just a few. We want to share the experiences of many existing Polcam users with you and give you the opportunity to win over £8,000 worth of product. This will include a Polcam starter pack and to ensure that you're up and running almost immediately, we're also including the eagerly awaited Black Magic Cinema camera. Over £8,000 worth of toys. 
All you need to do is visit our booth in Hall 10 at this year's IBC or visit polcam.com before midnight of Wednesday the 12th of September to register your details and complete a short questionnaire. As an added bonus for those that visit our booth at IBC, they will automatically be given an additional four entries to the competition. We look forward to seeing you at IBC where you will be most welcome to evaluate our systems. Thank you and back to the studio with John. That's great, thanks Stefan. Uh, definitely worth uh, going seeing them uh, at IBC or obviously if uh, you're not going, uh, get to that website and enter that competition. Uh, while we were at uh, Stefan's factory, uh, we did a full factory tour there and uh, we got some interesting outtakes which we might put on as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for these. We're going to uh, put those up on the feeds over the next few weeks. Uh, so um, you'll see those up on the YouTube channel on broadcastshow.com and if you subscribe to the iTunes feed, you'll see those there as well. So moving on. Uh, so. Wireless microphones, you may be aware that uh, wireless microphones and in-ear monitor users uh, will have to cease operation of Channel 69 by the end of 2012. And in case you didn't know, Channel 69 is, uh, uh, the un is unique in that it's the only 8 megahertz TV channel uh, that is reserved exclusively for licensed operation uh, of this type of equipment. Uh, and uh, Ofcom, God bless them, the UK spectrum regulator has now confirmed that Channel 38 uh, is the new tunable range and it's from such and such a megahertz to something else and Ian no doubt will tell us that in a minute and uh, this is going to be a replacement of channel 69 and it'll have an impact on everybody um, so we've got Ian here uh, from uh, Visual Impact indeed great for you to come along Thank thanks you. a lot now this is an area that I know is going to impact me uh, and, and lots and basically anybody who uses wireless microphones tell us uh, a little bit at first about so what's, what's the big deal about this moving to channel 38? The, the reason we've ev well, everybody's got to move out of yeah. channel 69 is because the spectrum's been sold. Right. And uh, most people um, have been informed about this over the last few years um, if you had a license. Yeah. So anybody who's not in, been informed about the, the change is yeah. one of two reasons. They either don't need a license because yeah. they're operating in channel 70, which yeah. is above 863, or they haven't had a license and therefore right. nobody knew how to contact <laughs> yeah, them, sure. so they couldn't inform gotcha. them. So what are you going to do? If you can work with just a few radio mic channels yep. in channel 70, then you continue using the equipment you've already got if it right. operates in the 863 and above. Okay. Um, that includes most of the entry-level Sony stuff and the Sennheiser stuff. Yep. And, and many manufacturers would have worked within the Channel 70 because it was designed yep. specifically for schools, uh, church halls, right. and people with a low radio mic count, so yep. four radio mics. In and one that place. is a license-free channel? That's license-free. Yep. Everything else has to have a license. Yep. That's everything that you're going to turn on yep. has to have a license. Yeah. So Channel 70... If you got a single mic, uh, just one lapel and a hand, or single yeah, on a perfect. camera or something yep. like that. Yeah, okay. if, you, if you've got a, a camera operator with two radio mics yep. and they have equipment that's tunable to channel 70, then continue using it. It's not a problem at all. Yep. It's everybody else who wants to have a higher radio mic count in right. their system. Yep. Anything more than four radio mics yep. um, and you want to have license use of the spectrum, then you've yep. got to move to channel 38. You've still got to buy a license. Yep. But anybody you buy radio mics from any manufacturer, there is in the information how to go about that. And there's websites as well, which is dead easy to get onto. And right. JFMP, JFMP, JFMG are the yep. people to, um, to, to approach about getting a license. Okay, so what would happen if you thought, 2013 comes up and you thought, forget it, I'm not going to change. I have a Channel 69 kit and I'm going to carry on using my Channel 69 kit. What, what sort of, what's the implication of that? I, I think what's going to happen is because the spectrum has been sold to very large companies, telecommunications companies, people like that, there's going to be some very, very powerful signals in that right. spectrum. So one or two things are going to happen. You're either going to get a lot of horrible noise on your radio mic yep. or you're going to have very, very limited range. Right. What I've been telling some people, although it's against the rules, I said, continue using them until you can't use them anymore. Right. But yeah. bear in mind that you should be considering buying new equipment about yeah. now. You've got until Christmas time this year, 2012 Christmas, and then in the new year, you really want right. to be looking at new equipment. And, of course, as you said, it doesn't just affect microphones. It affects in your monitoring, anything? Anything that's using that spectrum, basically. Yeah. That, that You've got to now move way down out of the 800 meg range, which has all right. been sold. So anything at 800 megahertz and above 
um, up until 863, which is yep. your channel 70, which is yep. free. Everything in that 800 meg range, you've got to basically, it's, right. it's going to turn itself off. It, nobody's going to catch you using it. There's no yeah. sort of radio mic sure. police out there yeah. or anything like that. It just won't work very well. Right. So you really want to invest in some new equipment yeah. down in the 600 meg range, which is the channel 38 yeah. in that region. Now, I know one question that has been offered is if people have this kit, they haven't managed to get the money that they could have got for it. Maybe they were unlicensed mm -hmm. or they bought it old or something like that. Uh, and they want to, f can they flog it to people abroad? Do you know what the deal is? I, I believe it? some people have been selling some abroad. And get, well, I don't, if there's somebody prepared to buy something, I mean, right. the, I, once again, I don't think there is radio mic police out no. there to control but it. Channel 38 is UK. This is a UK. It is UK. Yeah. Um, it was originally put aside for radio astronomy. Right. So there was talk of saying, well, wouldn't it be great if this was an international radio mic? frequency yes. spectrum for everybody to yeah. use but to try and coordinate one country is hard enough I, I, I really don't know how it's going to work across Europe and America and things like that it's very complex getting people to agree on radio mic spectrum so I suspect there's a possibility that if your radio kit doesn't do channel 38 but it does something that's legal to use in another country yeah, get it, get on eBay International. <laughs> well, yes, I'm sure you <laughs> can move them that way. way. <laughs> Most, definitely. Most definitely. But if you have um, equipment that operates in Channel 69 yeah. and it's of a certain quality, then yeah. a lot of the manufacturers can actually um, retune it. You can right. send it back. So okay. if you're using anything that really costs over a few grand a channel, yes. people like Sennheiser and Sony yes. will actually retune that equipment for yeah. you. Um, I, but most of the stuff that's a little bit less than that entry level, although, having said that, the G3 radio mic range from Sennheiser, I think they can actually retune right. one as well. But once it's, again, it's quite quite expensive. Yeah, and, and they say there's sort of a mid-range cost Mm, and, yeah. and it could get to the point where do you? I'd like to have new kit myself. Get, get new kit. <laughs> get, yeah. There's some great kit out there. Get, get some new kit and, <laughs> exactly and that. sell the old G3 uh, to somebody in another country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody wants to, to buy it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is happening from January the first, 2013. It, it's been everybody's been changing over the last few yep. years. Um, I, the actual switch off, where most of us professional licensed people will not be using Channel 69. We're taking up to Christmas, and then everything yep. goes in box. Most of the equipment in Channel 69, which is our company, Visual Impact, we've actually yep. got rid of it. We've got a little bit left that's with certain clients, yep. which is, we're in the process of changing over. But by Christmas time, it will all be changed over and right. working in new spectrum. So the ideal is that everybody should be on Channel 38. Or yes. If you license or channel seventy, if you want to go. Yes, I mean, but if, yes. If you've got equipment that works in channel seventy and yeah. you, you don't need to change it, then don't change it. You really, there's no point. You know, the, 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 a lot of these little G twos. I think you're using G two. Okay. Yep. We'll, yeah, we'll tune up to that um, spectrum, yep. and there's a little group there of radio mic frequencies you can use quite happily. Ian, thank you very much. Now, uh, no doubt. Some people have some techie questions and things a bit more in depth than what we're going to go into here. Um, and if they want to contact you guys, because you you know what you're talking about, where can they get hold of you? Well, Visual Impact, obviously, yeah. we, we, phone numbers, websites, all that sort of stuff, or yeah. email. Um, if you want to buy new equipment, sales at visuals.co.uk. Look at that, it's just there, look, look. You've even got a, <laughs> a, a link that says audio channel <laughs> underscore 38 dot php. Oh, so yeah. you've, got, you've got a page just for it. Exactly. And it's a PHP page as well. I think that was from our Rob Newton put that yeah, on there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, um, Ian, thank you very much. Sure. It's an ongoing thing, and I should think we'll, uh, we'll be talking again at some point when, uh, when more questions go on. But in the meantime, Ian, thank you very much for explaining a little bit about Channel 38 to us. Not much appreciated. Thank Cheers. you very much. Um, now, you know, I, I mentioned, actually, I mentioned about selling your kit. And... Uh, one place to do that is uh, on the TV Bay website. I had to mention it, didn't I? And uh, TV Bay uh, have uh, a uh, an offer on at the moment for a free advert on TV Bay for 90 days with a photo. And uh, all you have to do is go to the page that you see at the moment, which is their Facebook page. Uh, and I think facebook.com slash TV Bay will get you there. Um, and then click on the free advert tab. Uh, you'll see details there, and it is definitely worth uh, doing that if you've got some kit to sell, like a load of old Sennheiser G2s or something. Uh, that's one place to get rid of them if you want to. Um, so, uh, on to the Pelly Case Challenge. Well, as you know, uh, you can um, look at uh, the previous one we did on, 
on our, our YouTube channel or walkershow.com. And um, we've done a, another challenge with the Pelly case w involving water, basically because we destroyed the Pelly case by dragging it far too fast behind a rib last time. And did we prove anything? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure it's fun, but did we prove anything? Well, we had all sorts of people coming in saying, please, can you test it properly in water? We want to know how waterproof it is and how buoyant it is and things like that. So, this is Broadcast Show, and we respond. And uh, we did. So, uh, we went and uh, tested it in a local swimming pool. The full uncut version of this video, which is about 10 minutes long, so I'm not gonna put you through it now, uh, is uh, viewable on uh, in the broadcastshow.com review section. Um, but what we're going to do now is just play a little taster of what happened regarding the underwater test. So have a quick look at this. Like that. Okay. So time. Uh, well, one hour to go until we find out. In goes the case. Down it goes. Um, one hour and counting. So you can uh, probably tell by the heavy breathing that we have now dragged this case out of the water. Uh, we've taken the weights off, but at the moment we haven't opened it. So uh, this is the moment of truth. This is one hour at about three meters in this swimming pool. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna try and open it carefully so we don't get too much splashes, but this is it. Well, I have to say, uh, that looks good. Box of tissues has been underwater for an hour. Perfect. All other tissues, other than, yep, a little bit of dust on from our gravel. All is good. There is uh, no condensation on the inside. All the tissues are dry. Everything. I mean, even the lip is dry. So, um, well, what can I say? I have to say that Pelly Case has definitely won this challenge. Uh, certainly exceeds the standards that it meets, or says it meets, um, by a considerable margin. So, uh, I'll give this one to Pelly Case. So, uh, well, it, uh, you'll find about that, it definitely exceeded the IP67, uh, which was, if I remember rightly, uh, 30 minutes uh, underwater at one metre. Uh, we were astounded uh, by how well it did. And definitely go and have a look at the video um, to check to see how much weight it takes uh, to get that thing to uh, uh, sink. And uh, it's quite an interesting video to watch. Well, we are coming to the end of the show and uh, normally I get up and I walk around and, uh, and show you what's going on. Uh, but I just want to say behind the scenes today, um, uh, we've had uh, same sort of people we we normally have and we don't usually mention them so we've got we've got neil uh, from auto q and he's controlling the production suite um which is over that way there um and we have uh matt from tv bay he's in the green room uh and they're doing all the monitoring of twitter and the chat room feed uh simon from tv bay uh he's my producer and uh, he's <laughs> he's the one who's involved with uh, the running order and uh and mentions all sorts of little sweet nothings in my ear throughout the show. And uh, we have Lucy from TV Bay as well, who does a brilliant job of looking after our guests. If you want to come on the show, you will get pizza. That's all I can say. Um, we'd also like to say a massive thanks uh, to a few people who always help us out uh, each month when we do this. Again, Auto Q, they provide things like uh, this monitor behind me, uh, which is the big SDI monitor that we, we can put all sorts of things up on there. Uh, we have uh, Unicol who provide the stand. We've got Panasonic who are providing the cameras. We have an HPX250 again in a 171 over there. And um, you can see the review of the HPX250, by the way, on uh, broadcastshow.com and DV user. 
Um, and uh, you can also check out it's on the digital version of that as well, which is dvus.co.uk. Uh, uh, lighting again uh, is the Kina Flow's four foot four bank lights. And uh, obviously we still need to sort out the lighting properly one day and we're gonna get some experts to come and help in the next few weeks or months, I hope. Um, tripods again from Vinton, we've got the Vinton Blue 5, we've got Liebeck tripods as well. And uh, teleprompter, which funnily enough, I'm looking at right now is the AutoQ Master Series, the MSP12, which I think is brilliant. Uh, and we'll be using these all the time in the show. Um, and uh, I'm very impressed with this particular AutoQ, I have to say. Uh, mics, this one here is the Rode Procaster desk mic. And uh, I have a lapel mic and all sorts of things. And all these are provided by Source Distribution. Now, I will mention that if you're going to IBC, Autocue's production suite in a box, uh, which is installed by Neil here, uh, has been doing an absolutely brilliant job over the past few shows now. It's doing all the Autocue, it's handling the, um, the tally lights, it's handling the playout, uh, it's handling, obviously, the camera inputs, sound levels, doing brilliant. Uh, we now have a talkback system on it. Uh, what can I say? I'm very impressed. And if you're going to... Um, IBC, make sure you go to their stand and have a look at this system, which I have to say has been developed here and is working a treat. Uh, Audio-wise, uh, we are using the Presonus uh, Studio Live 1642 mixer. Uh, we did a show on Broadcast Show dedicated to this mixer, so I won't go into too much detail on that, but it is an amazing mixer. I love it. Uh, I have one myself and we use it all the time um, in, in jobs and just, just unbelievable mixer. Uh, so have a look at that show again it's on broadcastshow.com or on our youtube channel speakers uh genlec 8020s and uh we're using those monitors uh we've got megami cable again all sorts of equipment uh, provided by source distribution and uh the pc that is encoding this lovely stream that you're seeing now via wirecast which is telestreams wirecast if you didn't already know uh is provided to us by workstation specialists and uh they they make unbelievable workstation machines. Again, uh, I liked it so much, I ended up buying one and we uh, used one of their machines for encoding the live feed for a Call of Duty release a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, which we had, let's just say, an awful lot of live viewers on it and it did an amazing job and is as robust as you can get. Again, Telestream, Wirecast, uh, thank you for letting us use that. I love Wirecast. It's, uh, it does just about everything you, you could possibly want if you're a single guy, or girl, or producer, or single guy who wants to go out and do a, uh, a webcast from anywhere, you can use Wirecast and it'll do just about everything you could possibly want. Stream UK, again, I mentioned them earlier for doing the, uh, the hosting of this stream and the video on demand stuff that you see on broadcastshow.com. And uh, Tarium Satellite Communications, who are uh, providing the satellite uplink that we've got now ensconced on the roof at Broadcast Show HQ. So, uh, that's it. Broadcast Show Live, show three is over. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It seemed to go okay. The Skype worked. Uh, the audio, I hope, was an awful lot better than last week, last time, I should say. Uh, we are now off to IBC. Uh, so have a safe trip if you are going, and if not, we'll uh, see you next time on the show. And thanks for watching.